currently a sophomore at Oregon State University. I am studying computer science and I started the Girls Get It camp the summer after my sophomore year of high school. I wanted to provide opportunities for girls to experience technology in a fun and positive way and it was kind of my, it started off as a gold award project and it's grown a lot more since then. And we've provided opportunities for girls all across Oregon to experience STEM in a fun way. So we're going to take you through a couple activities that the girls actually go through during the camp. So the whole point of technology being fun is when it's hands-on and you're doing something, you're being creative and you're having fun, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take you through soldering and you're going to check out the laser cutter, our 3D printers, as well as we have Arduino boards, logic gates, um, a whole ton of stuff that, and robots. Don't forget the robots, of course. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's get started. So one of the things that the girls get to do is they get to design their own cookie cutters that they then get to take home at the end of the week that's printed off of one of our 3D printers. So Alexa's going to talk you through what the girls kind of experience and they learn in one day when they're learning about SolidWorks. Excellent. Okay. So I teach the girls how to use SOLIDWORKS, which is a computer-aided drafting, commonly known as CAD, program. It allows the users to create 3D models of objects. CAD is used anywhere in the design of ballpoint pens, TVs, to jet engines. So we use it quite a lot in our you know, modern technological world. For the class, the girls are given a tutorial in order to teach them to use the basic skills, and then they are free to apply those skills to create their own unique designs. We then take what the girls have created in our 3D printer, and printer to take their designs and transform them from shapes on a screen to something they can physically hold and use, like the cookie cutter. SolidWorks, by, SolidWorks functions by allowing the user to design an object from the front, top, and right plane views. When we can see an object from all these views, we can observe it in SolidWorks as we would observe it in the real world. So to design something, they would first select the top plane. So we're going to be creating this object as we are going from a bird's eye view from it. And then we want to enter sketch. There are multiple shapes available for the user. And while they are basic, because most forms that we create are just combinations of shape, these can pretty much create almost any object using SolidWorks. But we, for the moment, are just going to use a circle. And there we have our nice little circle. But most of the time when we're creating objects, we need them to be a precise size so they function for whatever use they're going to be put towards, which is where Smart Dimension comes in. Smart Dimension allows the user to create the exact dimensions of the shape. So here I'm going to make the diameter of the circle 4.25 inches. And there we have it. But that's not the exciting part. The exciting part is we get to make it 3D. <laughs> so we go to Features, Extrude Boss Base, and we extrude the, uh, the sketch up to create a 3D cylinder with a height of 3.5 inches. And that's a really basic cylinder 3D model you can create on SolidWorks. The tutorial we give the users, however, is the great cutter gear. And a gear is a pretty basic shape. It's just a small circle, larger circle, and then a bunch of rectangles connected. But it has the benefit of being able to show the girls how the different commands and parts go together to create the final form, which is a sketch here. And then they actually get to hold the physical manifestation of this form, which is here if you want to hold that. Ooh. And the girls get to take this home and use it so that they can able to actually see they designed something and then it comes forward in the real world using our 3D printers over there. The tutorial opens the door for girls to use their creativity, and there are some amazing designs that we get as a result. Girls have created anywhere from animals to really funky flowers and things to symbols that come from their favorite TV show and games. And SolidWorks has the benefit of having students and campers utilize their creativity, and any design needs creative thinkers. That means that girls who are artistic, right brain thinkers get involved in a technological field, which for many may seem daunting. Uh, I'm Alexa Papilo and I am now in my senior year. Yay! <laughs> and I got involved in Girls Get It after my freshman year. I attended the camp because I was persuaded by Savannah, 
who would often talk to me during my drafting and electronics courses. I was the uh, one of the instructors for SOLIDWORKS last year in a few of the other classes. And it was but, fun. Yeah. So this right here is a MakerBot Replicator 2. It is a 3D printer. Now this 3D printer starts from nothing and then there's an extruder head right in here that says warning hot surface. It basically takes different colored plastics and it melts it down and based on your CAD drawing that you saw like with SOLIDWORKS, um, you can bring it up on the computer, pull up the pieces on the screen, and then have it print out. And it'll go in a pattern. So there's kind of like these lines that you'll see, and it'll just kind of lay down layer by layer. And then so the girls, they'll have their cookie cutters and maybe a bracelet or two to take home with them at the end of the week. So what kind of material are we working with with this MakerBot? This MakerBot uses PLA plastic, which is like ABS plastic, but with a different melting temperature. And what kinds of things would ABS plastic be used for? ABS plastic is commonly used for Legos and other toys like that. So hi, my name is Erica Goonan, and something that I teach during Girls Get It is soldering. So today I'm going to teach you about soldering. The first thing is safety. At the beginning of the week, all the girls decorate safety glasses however they want. So before they even walk into this room, they put safety glasses on. Oh. So we have a pair for you. Thank you. Yes. And then we always remind the girls prior to the week to have their hair up and closed-toed shoes because sometimes the solder does, like, Bosch, so we always want to make sure that all the girls are protected. So this is the PCP board. This is what we... Uh, do the soldering on and this is some of the solder so the first thing we're going to do is grab one of the components and then grab your board and then you can just right now just choose any two holes where it fits and then stick them through and then we always then you flip it around and you want to fold them down this way it doesn't fall off okay and then set it down like that and then you're going to want to grab the soldering iron with the hand you write with and you don't want to grab close it gets it is very very hot so just and then you're going to want to grab your solder and usually you want to hold it out this far away so you have control but you're not too close to the heat and then you're going to want to usually heat this up for about two to three seconds right up on the where you put the component and then if you turn it, just and then if you hold it right up to it it'll melt it Excellent. and then during the camp this is actually what we make so it's a liar detector, so it detects your stress. <laughs> so all the girls get to solder that all by themselves, and then you can try it. So then we have a little switch, and then if you put your fingers on it, it'll detect your... Oh. So if it's like really loud, then like it's your, just detects so your I'm stress. Lying. So yeah. I'm lying. <laughs> okay. Or you're really stressed. Yeah. Or you're really stressed. <laughs> Mine's always really loud, so I don't know. All right, thank you, Erica. You're welcome. One of the girls even, she used the lie detector as like a science fair project, and she got an honorable mention about that. It was really cool. She came back the next year and was like, I can't wait to make another one. <laughs> Excellent. So, one of the big problems when kids are learning how to program is they don't have any physical thing to hold. Or there's no actual physical representation or like, you know, that that reward, that rewarding moment when something actually happens, mm -hmm. right? Opposed to just a program compiling. So, Ashley uh, created some Arduino curriculum for the camps and it kind of connects the programming and the computer science part to actual physical electronic components. Okay, so what we're first going to do is we're going to put in, to, in our components into our breadboard that connect our Arduino. And okay. then we're going to go ahead and code the light to flash. All right. Okay, so this is a breadboard, and these um, uh, the holes connect in different ways. So on the long side, they connect horizontally or vertically, and then the shorter ones connect horizontally. So we're going to take our LED first. And as you can see on your screen, um, for fritzing, we have our LED right here. So we're going to kind of replicate the same exact thing onto our breadboard. Okay. So you, you, as you can see, the longer lead is going to be the positive leg. It's the one that's bent. And then the shorter leg is going to be the negative leg. So we're going to do the negative one above the positive one, just so we can remember which one's which. Go ahead and put that into your breadboard. And make sure you push it all the way down so it stays in. Okay, so now I have our LED. We're going to go ahead and take our resistor next. And this is to make sure that our LED doesn't blow out. So, okay. It, yeah. Okay, 
So we're going to connect one side of the resistor to the longer L L oh. leg of the LED, the okay. positive side. So in the same row. Same row. Okay. And then the other side, we're going to bring it to another row on the other side of the breadboard. Parallel or? It could be parallel or okay. any of them because it's just connecting them. All right. Okay. And then we're going to take a wire. And one side is going to be connected to the negative side of the LED, the Which negative the leg, short. so the one that was closer to the top. Okay. So in the same row. Okay. And then that gets connected to the negative um, on the negative column all, all the way on the right. Okay. Okay. And then now we have to connect it to our Arduino board. So we're going to take another wire. And it's going to be also in the negative column. And then that's going to be connected to ground, which is GND on the Arduino board. And you kind of have to look above to make sure it's in the same spot, because when you're right here, you can't really tell. OK, so now we have to make it go full circle so we can connect the other side of the LED. So we're going to put, take another one and put it in the same row as the resistor, as the right side of the resistor. And then the other side is going to go to digital 9, which is just below ground. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do, so it works, that's awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open Robot C, which is on your right screen. Okay, and we're going to program, or we're going to code to tell the LED to flash on and off. All right. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is type in sensor value. Wait, have you ever programmed before? No. This is your first time ever? Yep. Oh, awesome. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Sensor so, value. Sensor value. Sensor is capital S and then capital V. Okay. And then open parentheses. And then we're going to type in DGTL9 for digital 9. It flashed once. It flashed once. Oh, yeah, so that's what we told it to do. We didn't put our, um, our uh, loop in. Oh, loop. One of the so, fun things with programming is it always does exactly what you yeah, tell it to. it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to um, put in one more thing. We're going to type in while true, but it's going to be under a task mean. So um, see the open curly bracket mm -hmm. right here? We're going to enter. Okay, um, the other way. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go back up to robot and then compile and download the program. And let's see if it works. And go ahead and click start. Oh, <laughs> it's flashy. Yay! Thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. <laughs> So my name is Ashley Loberger and I am the camp director of Girls Get It this year. Um, a lot of things from the Girls Get It camp have helped me at my Hillsborough High School classes in drafting and electronics and it's also benefited me through my focus program which is a drafting focus program. So what we have here is Rhino 3D and it's another CAD software. Um, it's really similar to SOLIDWORKS, as in you can make 3D objects and drawings, but in the camp we use it to make our um, gears in motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's for the first level. For the second level, we make little techlets. We make techlets. So. <laughs> okay, so what we show the girls first is we show them simple designs like lines and circles. So, and then also how to type in, let's do girls get it, okay, so they can put it on their gear, so they get to design whatever they want on here. So it's a lot of creativity and just fun, <laughs> the girls get to put whatever they want on there. So they get to make their, they get to design their um, gear in motion and then we save them to flash drives and we get to print them off on the laser cutter out back and then they get to take them home at the end of the week. Hello, I'm Victoria Cazzetto and I'm in 11th grade. I'm going to be a junior. Um, I'm going to be showing you Game Maker which is a really fun thing we teach at this camp. I really like it because a lot of the girls 
play a lot of technology games on their phones or anywhere else, really. And here we're able to show them how to actually make them. In it, we're able to show them lots of different backgrounds we're able to choose from. And we're also able to let them choose from different sprites so they're able to play as, collect, or even try to avoid. We're, I can show you some of the sprites. There's a lot of different ones to choose from. Like you can be an apple or you can be trying to collect apples. Or in some games, you're able to play as, let's say, a pineapple and be trying to collect cherries. In my game, I play as a hero and I'm trying to save the civilians from the ghost. Okay. The sprites can be fairly complicated because you have to program it exactly as to what you want it to do. Like if you want it to go left, you have to tell it that it has, you have to press on the left key. And if you want it to stop when you're done pressing the left key, you have to tell it that it has to stop then. It can also be complicated because you have to tell it that it can't go through walls or anything else like that. In this game that I made, you're just trying to avoid the ghosts and try and collect the girl, the boy, and the old man. And it's really cool because well, the girls are able to make this too, and it can be really fun for them because they're also able to do this when they're at home. In most of the games that the girls will make, they will have, they will, we will be able to make it be so they will have three lives, and if you hit your villain, the whole game will restart. So the idea is just to try and avoid the villain and be able to get your characters. So once you get them, they usually disappear because you've saved them by then. And if you hit the villain too many times, then the whole game will be over. Nice. What do you call your game? I will call it Explore Saving Humans. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So one of the big things at our camp is robotics. Um, the girls, they learn how to program a robot, and again, it's that instant reward or instant gratification, where you program something and then you get to test it out. It does something or it doesn't do something, and then you kind of go back to the drawing board and go from there. So Erica and Maddie are going to show you a little bit about the robotics that the girls do at the camp. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we tell the girls is that there's three major parts to the robot. There's the sensors, which is our input. We have a light sensor two touch sensors, like see if something touches it, and an ultrasonic sensor, which sees how far away something is. And then we have our motors, which basically moves the robot. And then we have the brick, which is like the computer of the robot. Okay, so the first thing is we teach two different programs. During Girls Get It, we teach NXTG and Robot C. NXTG is more like pictures like this, and then Robot C is where we type everything out, so it's a longer process. So we're going to show you a couple of the programs that we teach. The first thing we're going to show you is our square. And this is we just use move blocks. And then if you look down here, we have both of our motors moving. And then they're each going to go three rotations. And then we add another move block. And this stops one of the wheels. And then on our computer, there's a little program called view. And we can move the robot so we know how many degrees we want it to turn for a right angle. And then we put that in here. And then we add a loop, which is this. And this just repeats whatever is inside of it. So for a square, we want it to do four times. So we have the girls do it for a count four times. And then we download it. So this is, this is one of the first things that, that the girls do. They get to figure out themselves how many degrees they need to turn it, how big they want their square, what way they want their square to turn. And is this kind of the foundational technology that Lego Robotics is, is built on? Is this the same type of thing? Yeah, and especially for, like, in the Lego Robotics, we do, like, for FFL, or FLL, sorry, uh, we actually use NXT, so this is the programming that they'll use. And, and then, then in FTC, a lot of teams use Robot, Robot C. C so. mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. And then we have another program over here, and this is, we start using the sensors, so we, have, we use the light sensor next. And so the girls, we teach them how to detect the black and white. And then so I have another program up here, and it's, we just called it Stay in the Circle. And so we move the robot forward until it detects the light, or until it detects the black light. Once it detects the black light, the wheels stop. Then it, we move backwards. And then, so we go backwards. And then 
it stops, and then it keeps going. Yeah, so it'll go backwards to rotations, then it stops, and it'll go forward again, and then it repeats the loop. So once it goes forward, it'll go forward until it detects the black line. So we'll show you that one next. take off and want to do more, so they'll ask us for challenges. So Maddie's actually going to show you one of the challenges we do. After we're done teaching them about touch and light, we start using the ultrasonic. And so we have a game or challenge, it's called Can Do, and it uses the light sensor and ultrasonic. So it detects the black light and it senses when it wants to go towards the can. So we have the girls mostly program this one. They start it in NXTG and then the next day they learn it in Robot C. And it's just a lot of fun for seeing the girls to do it. Sometimes it's probably detecting Savannah Nasty right now. So it just continues because it's on a loop, so it'll just continue until it gets all the cans out of the circle. Okay, so we have snacks every day at the camp, and one of the days we have the girls make their own chocolate cake. 30 it's called second. STEM cooking. STEM cooking, yeah, 30 second chocolate cake. So they have their own um, power drill, and we connect a, a beater, like you would use for... On the end of a mixer. Yeah, at the end of a mixer, and we would put it on the end of our power drill. So they would use, they would <laughs> beat the eggs with our power drill, and some girls are like, um, they would start out being really hesitant because power drills can go really fast. And, and some then, of the girls have never even used one before. Yeah, and some and of the girls. And so girl, that's mm -hmm. just crazy. <laughs> yeah, and by the end, a lot of the girls are just going full blast on the eggs. <laughs> it's really funny to watch. So the girls so. will wear, like, their little safety glasses so that they don't get the egg in their eyes. <laughs> nice. And so then you pop the batter you pop in, it the in the microwave, microwave and it's done in 30 seconds. Yeah. Yep, 30 second chocolate cake. Amazing. It's pretty fun. <laughs> To be honest, when I first started the camp, I didn't think it was going to get this big, and it, I didn't think it would be more than just a one-time event, but after everybody was like, yeah, we want to come back again, you should really do this again, um, I did it the second year, and the, which was, uh, it was a ton of fun. It's, always, it's super great seeing the teachers like grow after they, after they teach at the camp, and passing this off to my sister and the whole program. Um, since I've gone to college has been a little, it's, it's, it was a little bit of my baby <laughs> that I was passing, but it's my sister and I know she's, gonna, she's, she's already doing a really great job. And um, as you can tell, the pink is more her. I'm more of a purple, but, <laughs> but uh, she's, she's really doing a really great job. <laughs> well, other than the pink shirts, the way I put my stamp on the girls get at camp. Um, I really liked the way that Savannah had all the girl, all the enthusiasm um, along with the camp. So I'm really trying to keep that because that's definitely a part of the girls get it program. And I would like to see the camp expand. It has a lot since Savannah's first year as a um, Girl Scout Gold Award project. Um, this camp would not be possible with all the donations and the support that we've gotten with the community as well as local industry. Um, there's Intel who has given us money and volunteers and there's also like the Hillsborough School District who has allowed us to use this space and this equipment. Um, without that, this camp would cost over $300 per girl and nobody's going to be able to afford going to camp for over $300. I mean, that's that's crazy expectations. It's not, a, it's not an option for everyone. And one of the great things about this camp is that I wanted to make sure it was an option for everyone. So with the help with companies, we were able to fundraise a ton of money so that it only costs $40, which pretty much only covers snacks, I think. Is that about right? 
about, yeah. Yeah, because the girls, you also get t-shirts, you also get, you know, you get to take home your projects. So that's a ton of money, as well as for the equipment and, you know, the time of the teachers and everything. So. Girls Get It can always use more donations. Um, like Ashley said, we're looking to expand, and that's not going to be possible without donations and support from local, local industry and businesses. And, yeah, and we also want to make sure that this program stays and that it's still a, an option and available for every student, and that money, you know, how much their parents make shouldn't limit your opportunities. There's a lot of stories of, of how the girls will come to the camp and then, you know, you'll see them on the first day and they'll be like, I didn't even want to come, you know, this was, my parents signed me up for it, it's kind of like, you know, just a thing that was going to fill up my time over summer. And then at the end of the week, you have girls like, I remember one girl was like holding on to Ashley and just like, I don't want to go, <laughs> I'm coming back next year, you know, all this stuff. And you see um, some girls go from, you know, incredibly shy to just opening up, but you also see them in like their abilities, like the one girl with binary. Oh, yeah. Wanna... Yeah, one of the girls who didn't know binary, she's like, she said that she... Um, wasn't very good at math and she thought she wouldn't be able to get it and then she tried it out and she said that she got it and it was really fun so that's just one example of a girl um, getting something that she didn't think she would have and she did and it just turned out to be a really great experience for her. And then you also have, you know, not only the stories of the campers where, you know, the camp and these experiences, you know, builds up their self-confidence and kind of transforms where they're going. One girl, she changed she ended up going to a magnet technology high school because she went to this camp and now she's going into a technology career and so I mean it's just kind of like this progression of um, really how much positive experiences can impact people's decisions. We've also had a lot of girls join first Lego League teams and first tech challenge teams and through first robotics and we've had one girl who attended the camp made it to worlds in first tech challenge so that was really great. There's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, don't be afraid <laughs> to try new things. <laughs> That's definitely it. And I mean, you'll see a lot of the girls, like, it really helps when you have these amazing, you know, teachers like Ashley and Erica and Alexa. And, you know, um, we're super fortunate to have them just open up and the girls just feel so more confident, you know, asking questions. And that's not something you have everywhere. So take advantage of opportunities like this because, um, Grow your confidence where it's easy to, and then take that confidence and do great things. So, <laughs> Even if you don't think you'll be good at it, take a shot at it, and you might end up really enjoying it. So. Girls get it!